Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're gonna talk about Unify Polar. You may be asking, what is Unify Polar? Well, it is a program that displays data from your Unify network. And what you could see on screen is one of the dashboards that I use with Unify Polar. I'm gonna show you how to set this up on a Raspberry Pi 4 in a Docker. I'm gonna be following a guide that was posted by nerdygeek.uk and I'll put the link in the description below. If you guys are new here, please subscribe. Make sure to hit the thumbs up button. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. We have an Instagram at Mac Telecom Network, and we also have a Discord server, and I'll put that in the description below. So as I'm running this on a Raspberry Pi, we need to download the Raspbian OS and load that onto our Raspberry Pi. If you guys already know how to do this, you could skip ahead. I'm gonna put timestamps into this video. So you want to select the Raspberry Pi OS and download it or download the torrent. I already have it downloaded, so I'm going to launch a program called Rufus. And this will allow us to put the iOS image onto an SD card. So I'm going to select disk or ISO image. And it was saved onto my desktop, so I'm going to click on the Raspbian Buster and press open. Then we're going to press start and this will put the OS onto our SD card and it will erase all the data from the drive. Now that the OS is on to our SD card, we wanna be able to access the Raspberry Pi from an SSH session. How we do that is to make a text document within our boot file to specify SSH. So I'm gonna to go to my boot E, which is where the SD card is sitting right now. And this is the boot drive for the Raspbian OS. I'm gonna right click, and then we're gonna go new, and then text document. And all we're gonna name this is SSH, and that's it. We're gonna eject the drive, put the SD card into our Raspberry Pi that is hooked up to our network, and then launch it with a SSH session. So the Raspberry Pi has booted up, and I just renamed it the Unify Polar. We could see it at 192.168.10.62. So we'll get our PuTTY session, and we'll go over to 192.168.10.62. And we'll press yes. So this is all default, so the default login is pi, and then the password is raspberry. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is change our password, so we'll go passwd, we'll put in the old password, and then we'll put in a new password. And like I said at the beginning of this video, we'll be following a guide by the nerdygeek.uk, and who actually created this program was Twitch Captain, and I'll put his Twitter handle in the description as well. So the first thing we need to do is to get Docker working within our Raspberry Pi. So we wanna make sure that everything is up to date. So we're gonna run the sudo app git update and sudo app git upgrade. So I'll just go ahead and copy and paste this and then press enter. So it says after the operation, 13 megabits of additional space will be required and we'll say yes to that. Now the upgrade is done, we need to install Docker onto our Raspberry Pi. Now we have to add the Pi user to the Docker group. So we'll use this sudo user mode dash ag docker pi. Now we need to reboot our Raspberry Pi and then log in when it comes back up. So we're gonna use the sudo shutdown dash r now and let that reboot and we can see that the network closed. Our Raspberry Pi is now power cycled. We're gonna have to log in with user pi and then the new password that we created. And we can make sure that everything is running properly by running the command docker run hello world. And you can see right here, hello from docker. This message shows that your installation appears to be working correctly. So the next thing we're gonna do is install docker compose, which allows us to manage our docker images. So these are the two commands right here that we're gonna run in our Raspberry Pi. I'm just gonna copy and paste. And then we'll do our second command copy and paste as well. The next thing we need to do, we need to prepare our Unify controller by creating a new user within our controller. This will tell you how to do it on a classic controller, and the second one will show you how to do it on the Unify OS, which would be like a UDM or a UDM Pro. I'm using a UDM Pro, so we'll go down to users, we'll add a user, and the user role will be limited admin, and the account type is gonna be local access. So we need to give this a first and last name, so the first name will do it Unify and the second name will do Polar. And the local username we'll put in will be Unify Polar and then we'll create a local password. 
And the password I'm gonna put in is test1234. The only permissions we need to give it is the Unify network read only, so we could have no permissions for Unify Protect, Unify Access, and Unify Talk. And then we could press add. In step three, we're gonna set up Unify Polar and the Docker Compose. So as they discuss here, we're gonna keep things tidy by creating multiple different directories. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this all into my Raspberry Pi command line. In this next step, we need to make a config file for our Unify Polar, putting in our IP address of our Unify controller and the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. We'll also need to have the username and the password. So we'll type in nano unify-polar, Dot .conf and then we'll just copy and paste this text in. And since I'm using a UDM Pro, we don't need to have 8443 in, but we do need to change it to the IP address of our UDM Pro controller, which for me is 192.168.10.1. We need to change the password to the password that I created for the Unify Polar on my UDM, which will be test1234. And next we need to put the IP address of a Raspberry Pi, which is 192.168.10.62. Then we need to exit and save this config file. So we'll press Control X, we'll press Yes, and then Enter. So if we go back into that config file, it should all be the same. Next, we need to put in the settings for Docker Compose. So we're gonna go back a level by going cd dot dot, and then we're gonna create another file using nano. So the file will be called nano docker dash compose dot yaml, and we'll press enter, and we'll copy and paste all this code into it. Now we're gonna press control X, and then we're gonna press Y and hit enter to save. Now we need to bring docker compose up by running the command docker compose up, all right, now we need to go to the IP address of a Raspberry Pi and then port 3000. So I'll go to 192.168.10.62 and then 3000. And the username and password is gonna be default admin admin. Now it's asking us to create a new password. And this is our dashboard. There's a few more steps that we need to do before it will start pulling the data from Unify and we need to create a database for that. So we need to go to configuration, then we need to go to data sources. We need to add a data source and the data source is gonna be InfluxDB. We're gonna select it. And then under the URL, this is where we're gonna specify the IP address of our Raspberry Pi in port 8086. So we'll do HTTP colon slash slash 192.168.10.62 and then port 8086. Now we have to input the influx DB details. So the database, we're just gonna call it Unify. The user will be Unify and the password will be Unify as well. And then we'll press save and test. So the data source is now working. Now we have to add the polar data. So we're gonna go and hit the plus button, go to import, and then we need to import a few IDs. So the first one is gonna be 10, 414 and we'll load that and this is for the Unify Polar network sites. I only have the one network site which is my UDM Pro. If you had multiple sites that you wanted to use it would show up here. The folder will be general and then the Unify Polar will be the influx DB and we'll press import and we need to add a few more IDs to this as well so I'll go to plus import the next ID will be 10415 and we'll load this. This will be for our UAP insights. We'll select the influx DB and press import. We'll go back to plus and then we'll import again. And the next ID will be 10416. We'll load that and this is for USG insights. So this will also pull data for the UDM and the UDM Pro. We'll select our database and then import. We're gonna import another one, which will be 10.4.1.7. And this is for our USW, so all of our Unify switches, and then we'll select our Influx DB. We'll import 10.4.1.8, press load, and this is for our client insights, our Unify clients. 
And last but not least will be 10419, which is for our client DPI. And then we'll select our database and press import. And the last thing we want to do, we want to make sure that our that our Unify Polar starts automatically. So we're going to put in the command docker-compose up dash D and press enter. And now we have our Unify Polar dashboard installed and ready to go. So we could see some stats here. Media streaming, we have about one terabyte of received traffic and then 18 gigabytes of transmit. And it will also show you other protocols we could see instant messenger. If we scroll down, we will see total traffic by application. On the right hand side, we could see total traffic by category. This will also show us a live graph of bits transferred by category. If we scroll down, we could see packets transferred by category. This is for the client DPI. So if you wanted to specify a certain client, we could go under client and then we could find the client that we're looking for and we could click on their name and it will show us all the details about that single client. You could also define it more by selecting a category if you just wanna know what media they're streaming, which online games they're playing. If you have more than one network site and you wanna look at the network sites, we could go to Unify Polar and then we could go and take a look at the network sites. We can look under site default and here it's going to show us a few things. I only have the one site on here. It's going to show us our latency. It will show us the speed test ping, the gateway CPU, the gateway memory. It's going to show us how many switches, how many access points, how many VPN users, if we have any VPN users on at the time. We could also look at our access point insights by going to the Unify Polar and then going to Unify UAP insights. And here it will show you a variety of different things if we want to see the clients and which channels they're using. And you could specify if you just want to look at a single access point, you could select which access point you want to see data on. And then last, we could look at our UDM stats. So I'm going to go to Unify Polar, USG Insights in FluxDB. Here it's going to show me the version of the UDM that I'm running, the controller IP and the uptime. We could expand the gateway down and then we could see some more information. So under here, it's calling it a Unify USG. It is a UDM. The speed is one gig. We have 24 users. The system uptime is five days, one hour, 24 minutes. Here is a speed test. So it would be 800 megabits per second download in 916 upload. It shows us our memory and CPU utilization. And then it's gonna show us some information about the networks that are on this system. If we scroll down a little bit lower, we could see our WAN throughput. We could see what our LAN throughput is. We could see how many packets are coming in and out from our WAN and our LAN. And we could also see WAN multicast and broadcast. So that's it for this Unify Polar video. I'll probably do some more videos in the future when I get more hands on with this. If you guys like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. If you have any questions about this video or the Unify Polar, please leave it in the comments below. All right, thanks.